you're luxury cruising. <laughs> Boy, is this a nice car. I definitely got to get me one of these. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week, we're back down in Ocala, Florida to check out a few more cars from the NPD collection. Jim and Rick Schmidt have so many fabulous cars, it's always hard to pick. But this week, I thought we'd do Lincolns, and specifically the Mark series, spanning 1969 to 1979. We got a beautiful Mark III, personal fave, a Mark IV, and a killer Mark V. These are all low mileage, unrestored originals. I'm gonna love this. Hey Rick, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, Dennis. Man, I love Lincolns, and yep. uh, you know when we were talking about what do we do this time? I said, well, you know, I've never done a, 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 you know a, a Mark series Lincoln, right? Uh, you know, three, four, five. What should we do? How about a three, a four, and a five? So we are. <laughs> we're yes, doing, we're we've doing got th plenty of all of those. You do. You have like a dozen of these things. I just can't. Yeah, believe it's great it. that we finally got around to featuring our Mark threes, Mark fours, <laughs> and Mark fives because Dad and I back in the '90s were uh, rather prolific with those. They make up a good portion of our collection. They really do. I was shocked. You yeah. know, I was, I was looking around the other day. I I did count eleven, and I'm sure I didn't even get them all. Yeah, I think you're a little bit shy. I think we've got fourteen <laughs> or fifteen of them. So this Mark three, and this was the first year for it, the '69. Yes. Uh, kind of started it all. This was a real different car, a real departure in, in mm -hmm. design. And it was also Ford returning back to the original continental concept of being European in design. Right. And not full of excessive chrome trim and badges and... This is elegance. Mm -hmm. This is clean elegance. Beautiful color. This color combination, uh, Lincoln called it Royal Burgundy. Oh. It's really just Ford Royal Maroon, but Burgundy sounds fancier. Oh, much fancier. Well, it is pretty. And coupling it with a not really a red, it is a maroon interior too. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. Is that, I'm assuming that's leather? Oh yes. Yeah, oh yes, but of course. And I love the yeah. gauging too, because they all, I mean, it kind of looks like jewelry. The build quality and the materials, these cars were really, really overbuilt and really a point, they really were first class. Now this, mm -hmm. is this hearkening back to the flow through uh, ventilation? Flow through ventilation, Yeah, so you have yes. the windows up, turn the vents on, mm -hmm. and you still got fresh air all the way through the car. Right. And then they're so long, but proportioned uh, uniquely. Mm -hmm. What a hood, but what yeah. a short deck lid in back. The roof line in it is very gangster-like. It, it is, has, it, it is. It has kind of a, a, a high <laughs> uh, uh, belt line and then that low roof. And of course, you know, it's a Continental, you so you're gonna have, you gotta have the, the, rear. The, the Continental hump. I always thought that one of the prettiest parts of it was these tail lights. Yeah, they're not that unlike what was on the Mark II. It is, it is beautiful. Now these, all of them were powered by a 460, right? Yes, they were. Boy, that's, <laughs> that looks brand new. That's one of the exceptional things about this car. We have not, done any really? restoration or freshening up on that energy that's department. Just, that's just beautiful. It's like brand new, and that's what wow. really makes this car special. It's a really slick piece and, a, and, and one of the best preserved cars in our collection. So this car, it had the best of care. <laughs> yeah. Low miles, all your stuff. Can we roll a few more on, though? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, let's, let's, do, do let's close that baby okay. up and cruise in Mark III. Here we go. Is it running? <laughs> I can't hear it. <laughs> that's that's really the trademark of all these uh, Mark Series Lincolns wow. is is whisper quiet, uh, smooth, and uh, you know, it's almost as if the engineering goal of these cars is to, as you're driving down the road, that it feel like you're standing still. Because <laughs> <laughs> everything is so well isolated. The steering is so smooth. It just overboosted. Totally. And the ride just uh, sucks up any imperfection in the road. And Cadillacs drive like Cadillacs, Lincolns drive like Lincolns, and nothing really drives like a Lincoln. Yeah. Especially one with, with such low mileage because, uh, man, did they uh, come out of the factory, especially with the Mark III, uh, with, with tremendous build quality. Of the three marks we're looking at today, the Mark III, when you just look at the uh, fit and finish materials of the interior and how the car is built, you really come away thinking that Ford really busted the budget to, to on, make this car. To make this car. 
I love the instrumentation too. Uh, very much like a fine watch. Personally, I always like the Lincoln instrumentation better than Cadillac for me because Cadillac looked more GM to me. Mm -hmm. and, and Lincoln always looked like a Lincoln. These cars just float. My goodness. Yeah, these cars have a, uh, just a quality to them. You can really see that a Lincoln was engineered and built from the top to the bottom as a Lincoln, not as a uh, Ford yeah. with uh, with more chrome and fancier sheet metal and, and a leather interior. That's not the case whatsoever with these cars. Yeah. Boy, the ride really is amazing on these, though. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the ultimate cruiser. Yes. This thing's such a boat. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think this is long until you get into that white car. You know, the Mark III is a really beautiful car, and it drives fantastically, but I gotta tell you, of the 345, it's always been the Mark IV that's been my fave. The 1972 Mark IV is really a standalone and a standout. It's the first year, and it's the most beautiful, it's the most powerful of Mark IVs. It's just an absolutely stunning design, and the more you look at it, the more incredible you find the styling. I just don't think people pay enough attention to how to how great these 72s are. Absolutely. Well, you know, the Mark series across the board, it, you know, at first glance, they, you know, they, they all look alike, but yeah. not even close, really, right. the, the details. And, and I think what I like about the four, it slopes both ways, you yeah. know? Yeah, it, it, it kind of tapers into a, into a very sharp, almost like an Aston Martin Laganda of mm -hmm. the 80s yeah. type of front end. And I think this is more rolls Royce-esque than any other of them. Mm -hmm. I, it's more exposed, it's longer. It looks bigger than it the Mark III. It is longer. It is really, oh, well, that explains it then. Longer wheelbase, <laughs> longer car, it's it, it's a whole lot of Mark. Man, oh yeah. man, like I said before, with the three, it's this big long hood and a fairly short trunk deck lid. Yes. Uh, I think it's even more so here. More even exaggerated, shorter, yes. Even longer. Now the three didn't have an opera window, this does. Yes, in 72, uh, for the first part of the year, the opera window was optional. And then later, uh, mid-year, they decided, now we're going to put the opera window into all of them. They're so. just going to have it. Well, what an inviting interior. Actually, these seats look even cushier. They're a little taller. Yes. It's a more comfortable car to sit in. It oh, has more it? leg room. It just has more interior room in general. I don't think that the instrument panel is quite as uh, attractive as the Mark III. I would agree with you. I, I thought the Mark mm -hmm. III was really unique with the individual pods. Yeah. This is kind of giving you more of a more unit of a, now. More of a cockpit type yeah, of uh, yeah. deal. Very different taillight setup. Uh, now it's looking more like a, you know, early 70s car right. versus the Mark III, which had something that was really had more of a 50s look in its taillight. Yeah, the Mark III had a legacy type uh, tail lamp, whereas uh -huh. the Mark IV went uh, under the bumper. Well, so another 460, let's have a look at this one. All right. Man, that's a long hood. You know, a that's a beautiful hood. engine. And that's something like 47 years old or something like that. Am I, it's, my math is yeah, right? All original. Is there really much difference in the horsepower or anything between, you know, that 69 Mark III and the 72 Mark IV? There was a little bit of a step down in horsepower, but they went they went way off the cliff in 1973. Oh, yeah, yeah. It looks like a new car. doesn't have any, many more miles than a new car, but we can still put a few on today. Oh, yeah. It, Give it a look. It yourself. drives like a new car, too. Well, let's do it. Notice this one's yet even a bit smoother and better riding than the Mark III it, was. It is, and it's even, and I can't believe this, it's even quieter. Yes. Now, this is a single exhaust car, though. I was shocked when I saw that. Yeah, they did switch to single exhaust uh, for 72. There's probably no real performance advantage with a 460 with where, where, it's, where torque's the name of the game to a dual exhaust system. Uh -huh. And the single exhaust probably goes towards making it yet a little bit quieter. 72 was the last year, it wasn't the last year for the 460, but it is the last year for a 460 that actually has power All the punch. to it. Uh, uh, in 1973, it was just a real weezer of an engine compared to the 72s. 460 in name only. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so the 72, the first year Mark IV, is the best performer. It was the year prior to the government mandated five mile per hour front bumpers. So That's why it's so clean. So it's got the clean front end design without that chunky bumper up front. 
the car in general flows more yes. than the three. It's a bigger car than the three, but it's a sleeker car than the three also. And that hood ornament is way out there. <laughs> it's almost got the Buick gun sight feel to yes. it. You know, it lines something up. But boy, that is a lot of real estate up there. Yeah, the proportions of this car defy <laughs> any logic. Uh, there, there, there was no thought towards packaging. No, um, no. There's, there's enough room under the hood probably for two engines. The trunk's not very large at all. Right. And then here in the middle, we've got a passenger compartment that's got all the leg room that you could ever want for the front passengers, but the but, not, but not the so rear, much but, in the back. <laughs> not a whole lot of room in the back. Well, it had to have the best ride on the road in 1972. Yeah, you know, with with the 15 inch radials, the the 460, the unbelievable yeah. suspension. This is just one of the nicest driving cars I've ever been in. So we've done a we've done a three, we've done a four, but of course you've got fives. Yes, we do. And a pretty, well, they're all special. But but that gold Mark Five. It's a 1977, which was the first year for the Mark Five. Well, let's go check that one out. What do you say? Yes, let's do it. You know, I'd have to say that that Mark Four is the nicest car I've ever driven. It's just smooth, powerful, wonderful. Now this car, this is a 77 this Mark Five. First year for the Mark Five. Getting a little disco here. We're, th this one's got plenty <laughs> of glitz, and that's mostly because of the of the color that was originally spec for it. It is called yellow gold diamond fire, and it just in the sunlight. It not only is a is a metallic paint job, but it's got little diamond like flecks in it. It that, just that sparkles. Catch the sun and, and it sparkles, and there's just more moldings and gingerbread and the, gills. And the half Landau vinyl roof. It's just a little. More disco. It is, it is <laughs> a little more. It four. is a little more disco. And uh, and there's more of the Mark III styling poured back into this as far as you some know, of the slab sided features. Yeah, and, and it gets a little more sharp up here. Mm -hmm. These turn signal lights up front. Do these operate off almost a fiber optic type thing where they're they're really illuminating the side? I don't think there's any technology inside there, but it, but it actually works. <laughs> but it to actually where, works. Where at night that those Lincoln monoliths uh, do light up. This bumper, they they really tried to make it look okay as a bumper, but it had to be so far out. I mean, you can stick your arm down yes. behind the bumper and in front of the grill. All in the name of saving us from ourselves. <laughs> and goodness knows we need that. <laughs> I would almost say that in build quality, the 72 was maybe the pinnacle. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the Mark IV was the pinnacle, because now things have started to get a little bit, not quite the attention to detail, perhaps. Mid to late 70s is where the big three kicked the door wide open for the Japanese and the Germans to march through. Yeah, this massive sunroof that appears to have like a gold tint to yeah, it. Yeah, it does. It yeah, does have a gold yeah, tint to it. The sunroof has a gold tint to it. The interior is a shade of gold uh, cloth. It's a gorgeous car. It is. I but mean, it's uh, it's definitely 70s. Well, and the square buttons, which I find interesting, mm -hmm. the dash is more like the Mark IV than the right. Mark III. So this thing really is is you know a little bit of three, a little bit of four equals five. Yeah, they stirred it all into a big pot and made the mark five. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right about the, the taillights now are, are vertical again. You know, not quite as much a throwback as the Mark III, but still, you know, kind of of a different era. This thing is so 70s, so late 70s, just everything about it. 460, but. 460, but not near the punch is the 460 that's in the 70s. Let's see if it looks the same. <laughs> well, you know. It looks pretty much the same. Got a little bit more uh, plumbing going on. Uh huh. And they had what? They'd reduced the compression ratio on these and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, and it, it was just a smog era. And you know, one thing that we haven't mentioned, the reason it's so low mile is this is actually serial number one. This is like, like, the, like the first serial number for a Mark V? The first uh, serial number for a Mark V, the first order to be placed in Ford's system. Very first Mark V, yes. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, normally, I would be shocked, but I'm not surprised. I feel worse even about taking this one out, but it's not gonna stop me. What no, do you say? it never stops us. <laughs> it never stops us, let's go. So now not only seat belts, but seat belts and shoulder harnesses, and it buzzes at you annoyingly unless you put them on. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to the yeah. 70s. And on top of all those other great features, it goes slower too. <laughs> <laughs> and it even has less power. <laughs> yeah, we've moved from our elegant Mark IV to 
to our bedazzled disco interior in Mark V. The only thing it doesn't have is a disco ball right here. Right. Because this really feels disco. I might have to add one of those. <laughs> this one, you can hear the exhaust a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It's not as quiet as the other two. still a really enjoyable car, but this 5 is no Mark IV. No, your hand is attached to a plain plastic steering wheel mm -hmm. with no wood grain finish or detail to it uh, whatsoever. You know, that steering wheel could be piloting a Fairmont. And uh, Scary thought, isn't it? Yeah. Still beautiful, and I will say that, you know, this is the only one of the three with cloth interior. Yes. And it's pretty cushy. I love cloth interiors. Do you? Uh, yes, and uh, and uh, it's comfortable. It is well. That's it is comfortable. <clears throat> and this interior is is quite complex, and it's got this you know texture to it, and get real seventies. I think it's awesome. I yeah. really, I've always loved cloth interiors, and I've always found them, uh, for me, preferable to an all leather interior. Well, it's when I saw this car e in the collection, yeah. the color you know just grabbed me to begin with, and I got to the interior, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> Definitely a, a, a disco special, I tell you, man. <laughs> well, when you came down to film the Marks, we had planned to drive our dark blue collector series Mark V. Nice car. And Unbelievable. 200 miles on right. that car. And you were walking through the collection and you took one look at this gold 77. <laughs> I must have this car. Changed your mind. And, <laughs> and my mechanics go, oh my gosh, I hope it starts. <laughs> Which it did. It's uh, It's... It's happy to be out because, quite honestly, I haven't I haven't driven this car in so long. I can't tell you how long. Well, and, and this has only got 2,100 miles on it. 2,100 miles, yeah. Unbelievable. Original tires. This is really striking. Now, when you saw this coming, uh, well, I think with any of these Mark series, you're making a statement. Mm -hmm. Been a real Lincoln day, and I'm loving it. Happy motoring.